Hi, this is Scott Bradfield, Dr. Scott Bradfield, and we're going to be reviewing the results of your midterm exams this week. It's a very serious part of the course, as you know, is to see how much you've learned, how much you haven't learned, and those who've passed this test will, will go on to great, super experienced careers in the, in the life of, of great short story writers, and those who fail miserably will will suffer ignominy, I don't know how to pronounce that word, and, and, and never ever achieve greatness. So let's look at the first part of the exam, the one that's entitled at The Unpleasant House Guest. Now you should have completed your own exams by this point. Do not listen to this video if you have not completed your exams. You're on the honor system, and the honor system requires that you be honorable which means you will mark your exam along with me now and learn your results first. The Unpleasant House Guest begins with the opening sentence of a work of genius as far as a short story might be concerned, the perfect opening of a short story. I don't know who wrote it, but somebody with great, great abilities as a short story writer. The opening sentence is, One day, Bob Johnson came home from work to find his wife Betty in bed with postman Pat. It has gravity, it has force, it has resonance. It sets up a number of things for a short story. It tells us what's happening, where we are, and who it's happening to. So that's all we can hope for from the opening sentence of a story. Now you need to select one of the following four possibilities as a second sentence for your story. A. Hi, honey. I'm home, Bob shouted cheerily from the front door as he entered the house. If you selected A, you were wrong. A goes back in time. Bob has already come into the house. He's already found Postman Pat in bed with his wife. You can't go backwards to what happened before your opening sentence. B is a possible, possible second sentence. Bob came in and stood over the bed as Betty and Postman Pat sat up and looked at him. Bob's eyes widened and his jaws dropped. He was very shocked and dismayed. Now, if you thought that was a good second sentence for the story, you were wrong. That is a completely terrible sentence for the second sentence of this particular story. Point of view is all over the map. We're being told where Bob is and where Betty is and where Post and Pat is and what they're all doing in the room. We're seeing Bob, who's our point of view for the story. It has to be Bob. He's the one that's come home. We're seeing Bob's eyes widen and his jaw dropping, and we're being told how he feels. Those are all the hallmarks of a sentence that's not narrative. It's just, it doesn't follow the first sentence of our story. So that's not the correct answer. C. Isn't that just like a man, Betty thought, always showing up when he's not needed? If you picked C, you were wrong. C is wrong because you can't have a complete shift of point of view from Bob coming through the door to suddenly telling us what Betty is thinking. D. Postman Pat had a big, pink, bulbous nose, just like on the telly. And that wasn't the only thing that was big and pink and bulbous about him, not by a long shot. Now, if you selected D, you are absolutely correct, and you will go on to a great career as a short story writer, because that sentence follows the first sentence. We're not being told anything about Bob. We're seeing Postman Pat, because if you come home, if Bob comes home and finds Postman Pat in bed with his wife, the first thing that Bob's going to look at is Postman Pat, you would imagine. So we see him. We see him described through the eyes of Bob. And even when we hear a kind of vernacular phrase like, not by a long shot, it's kind of Bob's voice in a way. So he's seeing the scene. Okay, now here we've given you the third sentence, the third section of your story. Welcome to Party Central, Postman Pat said, brushing cracker crumbs from the pink satin coverlet Bob has bought his wife earlier that year at Habitat. Come join the fun while it still lasts. Again, the point of view is still Bob, that the statements and the words of Postman Pat follow Bob seeing Postman Pat in bed with his wife, and it's narratively consistent with the previous sentences. Here are some sentences that you could select for the fourth section of your story. A. Postman Pat really missed his cat, Sparky. 
Now, whether the fact the cat is named Sparky, or I think Jess is actually Postman Pat's cat's name, it doesn't matter because you don't use that sentence because it's completely irrelevant information and we don't care. We really want to know what's going on in the room. So what Postman Pat misses and his point of view shift, we can't do that sentence. It's wrong. You can't do that sentence. B. On a different island in the Atlantic, Thor Mortenkinson sneezed. Now, that may sound like a terrific fourth sentence, fourth section for your story. It may sound excellent. You may really be interested in Thor and you may really want to know what he's doing on that island, but it's a completely wrong sentence. It has nothing to do with our story. It's completely out of left field. You have to get rid of B. C is another possibility. Wouldn't it be nice to wake up in someone's bed who wasn't married, Postman Pat thought to himself with bitter resignation, at the indignities he had suffered throughout his long life of seeking love in all the wrong places where he wasn't wanted. C is completely, completely wrong. You can't do that sentence. Point of view is shifted to Postman Pat. And also, it's just an ugly sentence. So we want even just to cut it because it's ugly. We're getting lots of explanation here about why, how Postman Pat feels. And the sentence is long and it's windy and it's boring. So we have to get rid of C. D. Bob felt flushed and hot. His wife, Betty, wasn't looking at him. She couldn't seem to take her eyes off Postman Pat. That's a perfectly fine sentence. You may, may or not like the story. Maybe you don't like the story, and maybe you do. It doesn't matter. Sentence-wise, that follows the previous sentences. When you write a story, as we've tried to talk about in class, you have to follow some of your first ideas. So if you start off with a good idea, about someone in a certain situation. You have to follow through with it and not throw in lots of different ideas and more ideas. You have to develop the situation you've started. So D is seeing Betty from Bob's point of view. And when she can't take her eyes off Postman Pat, that's being seen by Bob. The next section of our story. I don't really appreciate animated characters in my bedroom, Bob said. I wish you would go back to Legoland where you belong. Perfectly consistent sentence. Pat has said something to Bob. Rather than go off onto some traje other trajectory or come up with some new ideas or have some other characters show up in the bedroom, Bob replies to Pat. That would be the natural thing to have happen next. And we're still seeing the story through Bob's point of view, even though he's speaking. Here's our final choices for the concluding sentence of our memorable story. A. Postman Pat went back to Legoland where he belonged and Betty Johnson visited him periodically. If you selected that sentence for your last sentence of your story, you were wrong. That's completely wrong. You can't do that sentence. You've left the scene. You've gone off with two different points of view, Bob and Patrick, I mean with, with Postman Pat and Betty. You've summarized things and you've left the, set, the scene behind. You've rushed ahead. B. Sparky wasn't a cat. He was a dog. It's a relevant sentence. You have to get rid of it. C. Hi, honey, I'm home, Bob Johnson shouted loudly from the front door. That's a trick question, or a trick possible answer. As you'll notice, having Bob now say, hi, honey, I'm home, is just as wrong as if you'd put it as the second sentence of your story, because it's out of time, it had took place before the first sentence of the story. And even if you want to flash back and give that information, you can't do it without annoying everyone who has to read your story. So you can't go back and do that. And it's not necessary. D. Postman Pat scratched his head. Really? But I thought everybody loved Postman Pat. Now, you may not recognize, as I do, that this is a brilliant closing a sentence of a short story. But it's consistent, it has a sense of an ending, it ends the scene we're in, and it's still in the point of view of Bob. So those are the main issues to be, pointing, to be paying attention to in this exam. And I will simply move on to Goldilocks and the Three Bears and tell you that you have to select the middle of a story and the end of a story. If for the middle section you selected anything but D, you were wrong.
D is the only correct possible answer because it's in time, it follows through from the beginning. And the end of the story, you would have to select paragraph D as well for the conclusion because, as you will see if you read through it, it's not, those are the only paragraphs that are narratively consistent, that move forward from the opening paragraph, and which lead the reader beyond the events of the first scene, and they don't recapitulate or inform the reader about lots of information that the reader doesn't care about. So if you pass this, I'm very, very proud and, and, and thrilled. If you if you failed it, it's it's a shame, and and uh, your writing career will is is over. Um, I I, uh, I I will be passing the assessments on to the government and making sure that they know who's done well in this class and who has not. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Those the few of you who've survived this this grueling set of exams. I know they're tough, but you know we have to do it to just kind of weed out the the significant writers from the. The, the deeply troubled ones. Uh, ha have a good week. Um, I hope this wasn't too stupid a joke. I was uh, trying to be amusing. But uh, there's your uh, your exams are solved for you, and you can look at them. They are not outrageously wrong from some of the stories I often see. I'm trying to show you problems that do recur in 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 student writing, and I hope it helps a little bit. And we'll talk to you during the week. Okay, bye.